All right, this video is just a little bit to refresh you. Last week, we went through some stuff with quotas, uh, with the tariff and quota, and we went through that pretty quick, so I just wanted to make sure that this is an opportunity for you to go back and check that out and uh, to, to feel more confident in your understanding of that material. Um, we pretty much had down the whole idea of a competitive world market, and then we had another country here. So we've got the competitive world market with the world supply and world demand, but then we've got another country over here that we had the domestic supply and domestic demand. And what we had here was the autark. You remember the price without trade, if they were on their own isolated, and the autarky quantity here. Uh, again, I made this a small Q because this is just a small country. These are different in scale, even though they look similar in size here. And so we took this here. And we say, well, now this country finds out about the rest of the world. And they find out that the world price is PW. Now, since they're such a small country, this doesn't, if they start buying and selling in the world market, all of their production, if they could quadruple their production, it wouldn't make much of a dent in that world market here. It would shift the supply of it just a little bit if they were selling in the market. If they're buying in the market, the, the demand would shift just a little bit. But, not, but negligible. It's a competitive market. They're a price taker. They take that world price as given, we said. And when they take that world price as given, now they're now getting their copper at a lower price. And so the domestic production here goes down. That's QS. And domestic consumption here goes up. So that's going to be the amount of the imports. Okay, now that part I think you guys had down pretty well, analyzing the trade position of a country in a competitive market. What we want to take a look at here, though, is what happens if, we talked a little bit about the, uh, the politics of protectionism, that these domestic producers aren't going to be very satisfied with having these imports come in. They say, we've got to stop these imports, it's hurting us. And we looked at that welfare analysis using consumer surplus and producer surplus. And we'll look at that in a second here. What we want to get is what happens when there's a tariff. Now remember, a tariff is a tax on imported goods. When we had taxes before in a market, we shifted the supply curve up by the amount of the tax. Remember, the legal incidence of taxation is irrelevant. So we shifted the supply curve up, whether the tax was on buyers or on sellers we get the same outcome. So remember, we're shifting supply up by the amount of tax, but the tax is only on the imported goods. Effectively, they're using, we're still buying some domestically produced stuff out here to QS. And then the tax is on the imported goods. Now, because it's perfectly elastic, that's going to put the burden of the tax on, yeah, it's going to be on the buyers. So we go ahead and let's put a tariff in here. And you go, wait, we shifted, that's the supply, because we went up by the amount of the tariff. And effectively, what's happening now is the world price, it's PW plus the tariff. Sometimes people say, well, if we're charging the tariff just to the foreign produced goods, that won't change the price of the domestically produced goods. But if those foreign produced goods are selling at a higher price, it allows the domestic producers to charge a higher price. In fact, that was what they were after in the first place. They wanted to be able to charge a higher price so they could capture some more producer surplus relative to the free trade position. So what happens here is basically now our relevant supply curve is going to be up to this point now. And then after that, we start importing. Okay? So... With that being the relevant situation, we've shifted the supply or the price, the uh, world price line up. That's going to cause domestic production to go up, which is what we expected. And then it's going to cause domestic consumption to go down. So there's a reduction in imports as a result of the tariff, what we would have expected. Okay, so that's the analysis. That's how we're going to graph that there. But, you know, we might take a closer look there at the welfare analysis, the consumer surplus, producer surplus, and see what the scenario was. And we had done that a little bit when we looked at autarky versus free trade to illustrate the, with the free trade that the gains, the gains to consumer, the sum, 
of consumer producer surplus were greater. Um, let's take a look now. We had consumer surplus that was A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. All those parts were part of consumer surplus under free trade. Now, what was it under autarky? It was just A. Just A. So free trade made consumers better off because they got those lower prices. The producers, though, had under free trade just J. What did they have before under autarky? They had B, E, J. They had all of that, everything under the autarky price above supply. So they lost out. They said, hey, we want to get some of our producer surplus back. Let's stop these imports. And they lobby for the tariff. And when they get that tariff, we do what we did here. The price is now PW plus T. So what happens to consumer surplus? Consumer surplus is just A, B, C, D. Above the price, the pr world price with the tariff, and below demand. What do the producers gain? Well, those domestic producers, they captured back E. So now it's J and E. They got that back. Everything under the price above supply. Well, now we have a situation because what did the consumers lose? Not only did they lose E, which the, consumer, or the producers took, but they also lost F, G, H, I. Well, you guys know there's a tariff, and so what's going to happen with that tariff? That tariff, the vertical distance right here is the amount of the tariff. And the horizontal distance is the amount of the imports. So the number of imports times the tariff, that rectangle represents the government's tariff revenue. So it's not lost to society. But, do you see the bookends? We talked about the bookends. So this is just a refresher. F and I... The little bookends there, those deadweight loss triangles around that rectangle. So the deadweight loss, a symbol of inefficiency. And so we see, now the producers, they got behind that because they're going to gain. Consumers are going to lose. What the producers gain is less than what the consumers lose. So when we move away from free trade with protectionism, there are some winners and losers, but the total sum of consumer surplus and producer surplus is decreased. All right, I hope that's a good refresher for you. You can check out the other clip on uh, import quotas. Good luck on Big Quiz 3 coming up.